In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady Seat of Wisdom, Saint Joseph, Saint Athanasius, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Saint Athanasius, who we celebrate today in the Church's liturgy, is not a household name, you might say, in in our day, but. St. Athanasius throughout the ages has been one of the great saints of the church, a great doctor of the church, one of the four primary doctors of the Eastern Catholic Church. Um, St. Athanasius lived in the fourth century, was born in 293, was uh, to Christian parents, was educated in the great city of Alexandria, Egypt, where he grew up and later on became bishop. And he spent almost his whole entire life as a priest and as a bishop defending one simple truth, that Jesus Christ is is a divine person with two natures. This little truth, which we call the hypostatic union, was called into question by the great heretic Arius, and the great Arian heresy which spread throughout all of Christendom in his day. Saint Augustine says that the, that the world woke up and found itself Arian. So far had the heresy of Arius spread that at one point it was the Pope of Rome, the Bishop of Rome, and Saint Athanasius, it seemed, were the only two bishops who hadn't been deceived by this heresy of Arius. The Arian heresy was that not was that Jesus was not a divine person alone, but a divine and a human person. And that these two persons were somehow in some kind of union, but not a union that was, um, uh, it was like Jesus Christ was the human person and the divine person was separate. And that Jesus was used almost like a puppet, you might say, by God and not really a true God. You might say Jesus was seen as like a demigod, or you might say as like a puppet, a dummy god. You know, he wasn't really the God that we worship. He was being used by God as an instrument, but it was not uh, one and the same person. There were two persons, according to Arius the heretic. And Saint Athanasius had to defend this the incarnation, he's known as the doctor of the incarnation, but also he had to defend this personhood that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the divine person, one and same, and he's not two persons in one one, uh, being, but he is two natures. He has a divine nature and a human nature. We know that um, as as the church later on was able to explain, nature answers what and a person answers who. When you say, who, what is Jesus? He is true God and true man. But when you ask, who is he? He is God. And this has been the mystery of the hypostatic union, how the divine word, the divine person, the second person of the blessed trinity assumed a human nature but that it was his truly human nature and that everything Jesus did in his human nature, you can say that God did it. So you can say that today that God spoke, God worked the miracle of the loaves and fishes and that God died on the cross in his human nature. That Jesus experienced, suffered death and uh, truly rose on the, the third day. All this is very important because when you start confusing who Jesus is, you then start uh, manipulating uh, this uh, Jesus into becoming uh, a human a human construction instead of being the true God that has come to us from the Father. And that uh, Jesus is truly uh, the one who saved us in his human nature. That if uh, it wasn't really God who 
offered himself on the cross, then our salvation would not have been, when had not been achieved. This is the great mystery of the hypostatic union, that God became man and dwelt among us and uh, truly worked and suffered and died for us. And uh, today there are people who try to also, you might say, uh, turn Jesus into just being another guru, another enlightened one, uh, like all the other, you know, gurus out there. And they do that by divorcing Jesus from his salvific work and trying to make just, you know, his teaching or his words. But they try to disassociate uh, Jesus from the work of salvation, which is his cross, that he suffered and died for us and had, that he rose from the dead. You might find that in many places in the more new agey type of Christian heresies out there, you won't hear any mention of the cross. You won't hear any mention of sin. And that they will take some aspect of Jesus' preaching and maybe, you know, turning it into the gospel of prosperity, you know, instead of the whole gospel, which is everything, his life, passion and death and that everything that Jesus said and did is important and that the most important thing is that Jesus Christ came and uh, revealed to us God in all of his fullness and wanted us to uh, to accept him as our Lord and Savior and that is important, that truly he saved us from something. He saved us from sin. And to negate that or to deny that or to somehow make it less important is to truly water down Christianity. Uh, Arius and all the heretics throughout the ages have tried to make Jesus into their own image and likeness or to make him less than he truly is, the Son of God. Um, in his work as Bishop of Alexandria, as I said, this was the main task that God gave St. Athanasius. In his 40-some years as Bishop of Alexandria, he spent his whole life as a bishop, pretty much defending this truth of Jesus Christ and his hypostatic union. He spent 17 years of those 40-some years in exile because when uh, he would anger the powerful Aryan heretics, they would try to seek out his life and try to take it. And so he'd have to flee into the desert where he spent some time with the great Saint Anthony of the desert, uh, the hermit, who while he was with Saint Anthony, Saint Athanasius wrote the life of Saint Anthony uh, of, of Egypt. Uh, St. Athanasius um, also um, was the one who brought monasticism to the West because when he was in exile, he went to Rome where he uh, distributed his work on St. Anthony uh, of Egypt and it inspired other Christians in the West to take up this aromatical and monastic life in the West. So in the midst of all his sufferings and trials, God even used his exile to help bring uh, uh, this idea of monasticism to the West. Uh, St. Athanasius was a courageous fighter for the faith, and we need uh, his example in the priesthood and in bishops and in the laity today to defend the faith. He did it all in charity, but he also did it in firm and bold ways and uh, did not um, water down the faith. He did not back down to heresy. He said it boldly. He said it clearly. He stated it in season and out of season, uh, the importance of the teaching of the church. And St. Athanasius is truly a model for us today in uh, all the difficult situations that we may find ourselves in in defending the faith today, which may not be so much 
the nature of Jesus Christ uh, being true God and true man, but it may be in his teaching, especially his moral teachings, which in many cases it may be that they're, they're watering down his moral teaching by denying the fact that Jesus is God, that if Jesus is God, then I better listen to him and his teaching, whether it be on the nature of marriage or the, the immorality of homosexual behavior or the immorality of artificial contraception then has great weight because it's not taught by just a man. It is taught by the Son of God himself. So there may be still this attacking the divinity of Christ in subtle ways today. But uh, we must defend the faith because it is truly given to us by God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.